For all of us who are inside of the house right now, we have all been faced with one situation or another that's not unique, but it does come from being locked in. You've got some people who feel like they're shell-shocked. You've got some folks who feel like they just cannot take it anymore. They just got to get out, and I get it. If you got a backyard, venture out there for 15 or 20 minutes, soak up some rays, and come on back in the house, I guarantee you'll feel a little better. If your community allows you to go to the store and pick up emergency products, things that you need to cook or things that you need to clean the house, then take the opportunity and do that. The one thing I want to impress upon everybody is it's not good for any of us, but we all have got to learn to make the best of it. You know, as I look back at all of the tragedies that the United States has had over my lifetime, the one thing that I'll say is that we all seem to pull together better than any other country that I've ever observed. We pulled together right after the uh, New York bombings. We pulled together after 9-11. We pulled together when we had the hostages back in the 80s that were there for days and days and days, months and months. We pulled together because that's who we are. Undoubtedly, we pull together because the glue that holds this nation together is the Word of God. It was founded on those principles of treat your neighbor well and don't harm one another and think the best for each other. And it's with that that we have to hold on to right now today. Well, you're going to find a lot of people telling you a lot of different things, right? They're going to tell you things like if you've got faith, then you'll come to church and you'll pay your tithes and offerings. Hence, you've got a couple of pastors who've been thrown in jail because of that mindset. You're going to have other people to tell you that the reason why this is happening is A or B or C. I'm sure you've heard them all, and there's no need for me to repeat it here. But the one thing I want to tell you is that if you are a person who follows the word of the Most High God, you'll understand that we are to obey the laws of the land. Now, if the laws of the land ask us to do things that are contrary to his word, well, he's got provisions for that too. But you have to honestly sit back and look and say to yourself, how bad is this situation? You're in the house, you're safe. For the most part, you've got enough food if you've prepped. And if you don't, there's even provisions for you to go to the store and get what you do need. So how bad is it really? It's really not that bad when you consider that you've got those around you that mean the most and that you can actually make the most of the situation by doing things that you maybe didn't do before. Maybe you can do like I did this morning and sit down and read with your grandchildren and let them read to you. Things that you haven't had time to do in the past. I feel like this is just a spiritual reset for those of us who know the Word of God. A time for us to spend more time in devotion. A time for us to pick up the Bible, the physical Bible, and read it a little bit more. Yeah, it's the time for us to get back to the grassroots, the things that made us who we are, the things that teaches us how to become stronger in Him. This is the time for the reset. The reset to get your finances in order. Work on that credit report. Do all the things that you needed to do. Heck, you could even take this time to fix up your resume. This is the reset. The reset for the body of Christ or the remnant that is still here to strengthen their skills and understand the importance of spiritual warfare. The time for us to dig deeper in the word and understand positionally where we're supposed to be right now in this day, in this hour, in this place. Honor the rules of the laws of the land for right now. Trust in God. Let him do the rest. And if you are submitting yourself to him and his will and his word, I guarantee you the situation will go by quicker. If you remember a while ago, we did a story talking specifically about those folks who went around that three and a half week mountain and it lasted for 40 years. They literally extended a 21 day trip out to 40 years. The children of Israel did that. They complained about the fact that they had leeks and onions back there. They looked at Moses and said, gee whiz, even though we've seen the Red Sea part, we still don't have any faith in your ability to lead us. Huh? Isn't that amazing the way that we can be? Look at that situation and take these three important points. One, don't complain. Two, be happy. Three, trust God. Please like, share, and subscribe. This is Felicia Lockhart, and this has been the Lockhart Perspective.